Hey all, Alex here at your home of the Music Deep Dive, and today it is time for a review of the 1991 biography by Adrian Desmond and James Moore, Darwin, The Life of a Tormented Evolutionist. Uh, worth noting, before we get into this, that the full title, Darwin, The Life of a Tortured Evolutionist, was added on later. I am reviewing the initial edition of the biography, which is simply listed as Darwin. So if you find it online or in a used bookstore, it's possible it will go under two different names. Uh, Charles Darwin, of course, we talked about in the context of the Origin of Species review uh, not too long ago. Adrian Desmond and James Moore, two very prominent British scientific historians, specifically in the realm of the uh, evolutionary sciences, uh, and perhaps even more specifically, the history of Charles Darwin. The two of them have collaborated together and independently on a few different Charles Darwin books, and biographies over time. Uh, Desmond, professor at the University College London, Moore, a professor at the uh, Open University, um, as well as Cambridge. And this is the, uh, this is one of the earlier works that I think the two of them did together, but it certainly serves as the most all-encompassing of the bunch, uh, because this is a very much a full kind of start to finish birth to death biography of Darwin that attempts to tackle the subject with a sort of scholarly rigor while also acknowledging that the amount of popular biographies that really deal with Darwin in a satisfying way are few and far between. And I, I bring this up because you will have people who will refer to this as a bit of an academic work and as a bit of a scholarly work. And to me, I, I, I understand that in the sense of the rigor that is involved in writing this work and in the scope in which they are citing various different sources, sourcing... Uh, a lot of Darwin's journal entries, his letters and things like that. There is a real sense of completion here. And certainly the length of this volume will turn people off. It is about 800 pages, give or take. Um, it is a pretty massive tome, as it were. But this is pretty exceptionally readable, honestly. Um, that, and that's, I think, what caught me a little bit off guard. I was not really, and maybe it shouldn't have, because I, I, I was expecting this to be a pretty dense read, a pretty, a something that maybe presumes a little bit more of its reader than this volume really does. But in a way, it kind of reminds me of, if you've watched the Charles Darwin Origin of Species review, and if you haven't, I highly suggest that you do. In that review, I talk a little bit about how Darwin wrote the book for academics, knowing that it was going to be read by the common person and adjusted his language and his arguments and everything about how he structured and paced the work to fit both of those needs. And this Desmond and Moore book, this biography of Darwin, I think serves the same purpose. Um, there's a lot of material to get through, which is why this is a... 700 800 page book as opposed to you know something closer to 300 pages but that is necessary if you want to understand the man himself now the challenging part and i don't envy desmond and more from what they have to do here is in trying to understand who darwin was and trying to understand not just his personality but also his motivations why did he throw so much of himself into the evolutionary theory project, um, the research on natural selection, the initial um, HMS Beagle trip in the first place? Why did he immerse himself so completely in all of those things? And the portrait, you know, they, they use the word tormented in the title of the the paperback reprint and i think that is a pretty solid description of what this man ended up going through 
I think in a lot of ways he comes across as kind of this this sort of listless figure who doesn't necessarily have a great sense of direction, especially early on. Um, he's someone who is very, he comes from a very religious family. There's this idea that he's going to be part of the church um, and sort of go into the theological realm in some sense, even though you can tell he's gradually losing interest in it and perhaps never really was that invested in the whole thing in the first place. And then he takes the initiative, he goes on the HMS Beagle trip, and it totally changes his perspective of the world. And now he has to kind of grapple with that as he uh as he continues. And there's kind of, it's it's one of those things where after he comes back from the Beagle trip, it's very obvious that there is no going back in a sense. He's not going into the church. He is fully down this different path. And that just becomes more and more evident with whatever else happens for the remainder of his life. Darwin was a man who suffered from a lot of chronic illness, was very consistently unhealthy for a large part of his adult life. Um, and he was also someone who went through a lot of loss. Um, of course, his, um, you know, it wasn't uncommon to lose children back in the 19th century just because of where we were at from a healthcare and medical advancement standpoint. Uh, but Darwin lost several children, most notably um, his daughter, Annie, whose death he witnessed in very kind of gory detail. They talk about it a lot when it happens, and it totally <laughs> breaks him. And not only does it break him, but it also severs from him the last shreds of spirituality that he really had. And... I'm not going to say that that is the impetus for him pursuing the publication of his natural selection theory, because that's still several, several years down the line from that. But that might have taken away a barrier and made him more willing to completely accept that conclusion as an honest representation of what his beliefs were. In any case, it's 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 a difficult book to read at times because of the tragedy element in there. And, you know, you never get the sense that Darwin in, entirely reaps the benefits in a positive way from the publication of his work. Um, like, it certainly boosts his public esteem, but he never really... Um, I don't know. There, you, you never get the sense that there's a complete satisfaction from that. There are moments, but I think ultimately um, there, there, there's a, a little bit of description towards the end after his death where he is essentially sanctified. And I think it's kind of portrayed by the authors as a bit ironic in the sense that this is a guy who towards the end of his life was as agnostic of a person as one probably could be. Um and then after his death, what do they do? But they deify him, essentially. It's, it, it's an interesting dynamic. It's an interesting story. There's a lot of information in there, but I think the writing, as I said, is very approachable. Um, I think it is paced well. And I don't think... If the length turns you off, I understand that. And to me, this actually breezed by pretty quickly as far as 800-page biographies go. So I think if you want to get an understanding of Darwin the person, and I think if you're interested in the history of evolution, then you have to get an understanding of Darwin the person. Uh, this is, I, I can't imagine you would find a better choice for this. Uh, I know there are other biographies out there, but uh, I have no reason to believe that any of them are going to get as uh, complete of a look at the man's life as this one is. Uh, and I'm not sure it'll be particularly close either. I strongly recommend it. It's a really great read. It's a really affecting read at times, and it is always enlightening. So check it out. I'm really curious to know what you think. If you have other Darwin book recommendations, let me know. With that, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Hit that bell for notifications and tell a friend as well. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time right here at your home of the music deep.
dive.